Hey everyone, in this episode we're going to do another diecast model kit. Now, I'm preparing to build a 50cc version of the Waddell Williams Model 44, the Gilmore Redline from Black Horse. So in preparation, I was looking for some old photos, maybe frame something on my wall. And on eBay, I came across this uh, diecast model from First Gear Diecast Model Kits. And it looks like it was released in 2005. I picked it up at a pretty nice price. And I was not familiar with First Gear before, and so I took a chance on it. And I filmed unboxing it and putting it together. I know there are some diecast models that look really cartoonish and not scale at all. And I didn't want to waste my time with that, but I took a chance with this. And so we filmed it. I wanted to show you what this looks like coming out of the box in preparation for a bunch of Gilmore videos over the next couple of months as I build the 50cc version from Black Horse. So let's go ahead and zoom in, watch me get this out of the box. This kit actually does require some assembly, so I had to get the screwdriver out and a little bit of glue, and we'll show you that. So tune in if you like the Gilmore, if you like die-cast models. Um, let's go ahead and see what this is like. So here's the box, first gear diecast model kits, the Waddell Williams Racer and the Gilmore Red Lion Scheme. We'll get this out of the box. And again, this was from uh, the copyright on the box is 2005. And I can tell this box is a little bit old. You can see around the edges, the creases, but here we go. Uh, looks like it's packaged very nicely. And here's the instruction booklet. It's one size. so. In case you have one of these and don't have the instructions, you will be able to take a screen capture of this instruction booklet because it's just this front page and that is all there is to the instructions. We will take out all of these bags and go through it. Here are the pieces of the engines, the manifolds, and the distro wires that go in front and back of the engine and then the coils. So I was worried that this might look something like this model. This is a Corsair that I've recently thrown away. It's a die cast Corsair and it's very cartoon like and the edges don't match up and from far away it looks good. And I was like, I, I hope this doesn't look like this. But if you can see from the pictures, I was very happily pleased with this model. So. All right, so those are the engine components, and here are these awesome wheel pans. And if you hear that being set down, these are all metal. They're nice and heavy, and they look beautiful. So wheel pants coming out. Here is the cowling, two-piece cowling. There's that front ring and the cowling, and I think this is plastic. It doesn't feel like metal. It's not heavy. Uh, so that piece is plastic, and here is uh, a bag with the canopy, the wheels, the tail wheel and a little round cover for the bottom screw. Here is the first piece of the fuselage. Looks beautiful, packaged very well. Combination of, of plastic wrap and some light foam wrapping in there. There's the horizontal stabilizer and elevator. Here is a bag with all of the flying wires and there are four screws, two large and two small. According to the instruction booklet, that's A and B. And as we pull the wing and the rest of the fuselage out, um, keep an eye on the box, uh, because when I pulled this out, I was so excited and forgot that there was one more bag in there. So uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. But this is very nicely packaged, wrapped up really well. You can see the cardboard spacers, uh, the, it doesn't move around a lot. So very, very good packaging here. So we'll try to get all the pieces in the shot here so you can see what all comes. Minus the one little bag that I left in the box because I was so excited about the, the wing portion. But the cool thing about the, the flying wires is that they're all bent specifically and you have to use the instruction booklet to kind of see what goes where. Uh, so there was a lot of work done. Those, they're, they're bent in a special way. So really, really kind of impressed with that. 
So I was looking for the propeller, and I thought maybe it was kind of wrapped up in the fuselage. Uh, but I took that bag off to go and put it in the box and realized, oh, that's what I left in the box. So this happens all the time, especially with uh, remote control airplanes. If you're getting a big ARF, there are little pieces here and there. And, you know, it happened a lot, especially with, for example, the old 3D Hobby Shop ARFs that came from the Vixol plant. Uh, a lot of times they would have uh, a push rod or especially the bigger models, they would have uh, the rudder push rod or the rudder kind of connecting rod kind of stuck to the lid of the box and so many people would throw those away so all right we're going to get started on the motor here's the cowling we'll get this out of the container and again there's uh these multiple pieces here the propeller the cowling the cowling ring and then we have the pistons the exhaust manifold which goes on the back and then i'm assuming those are the distribution wires that go on the front of the the pistons so exhaust manifold goes on the back there are two little holes that it kind of clips into and the distro wires go on front and they it's pretty self-explanatory how they go together I'm I'm exploring it because I'm putting this together for the first time while I'm filming it so this is a little bit of uh, me figuring out how it goes together and the propeller just goes right through now this is where it's kind of interesting the instruction doesn't really explain this. And I'm wondering like, so how the the engine has to be behind that cowling, but how does it stay in the cowling? And, and what it is, is that the motor actually fits into that front ring. And uh, you can see I'm, I'm kind of playing around like, okay, it's not gonna stay in there, but uh, I have to put it through the front ring before I put the propeller on. So, okay, I put it away. I wanted to see how it fit onto the front of this fuselage. So we'll unwrap the main fuselage and this thing is nice and heavy. It's beautiful. And you will notice it does have a yellow tint to it. And I think we're all kind of used to, uh, it's the Gilmore being like a red and a cream. Um, I think this was an attempt at that cream, but it, it is yellow and uh, it it is yellow as it looks on the camera. It's not yellow mustard yellow. It is like a creamy yellow. So some people might not like that. Um, I should probably go and do some research and see really what that color was. Uh, people are just as interested in the true colors of the zeros. I'm sure there's a lot of research on what uh, color this was. So maybe that's something I'll do. So here's the bottom, the wing, the main wing and the bottom of the fuselage. Unwrapped, looks really nice. And here's, we'll get the horizontal stab out of its bag. So here is where I've just noticed that the motor notches into that front cowl ring. And there's one piece on the motor that you can see that fits right into the notch. And so you would place the motor like that into, you see that notch on the right hand side of the ring. Put it in there and then the prop can go through. And there is this little plastic collar that sandwiches that you kind of just you have to pressure fit onto the back of the propeller and it, it, it's actually kind of hard to go on there but you do need to have that on pretty tight tight enough to you can see me putting some effort trying to get that in because the tighter that is then the less slop there's going to be after it's all installed so play around with that it's it's not that easy to get that on um, if you have bad fingernails like I do, it's a, it's a little tougher, but so the horizontal stab gets sandwiched in. It's a little bit easier to kind of put it on top, uh, on the top piece of the fuselage and set it down in there. And this is where we have the four screws that were in that bag with the wing wires. And don't be uh, surprised if it doesn't fit perfectly. Um, it's actually, you need these screws to kind of wedge it all together. So if you do these front screws first, you'll see that there's like a space 
lifted in the back and it's not it doesn't sit flush yet but you have to tighten the screws and then it all sandwiches and sits nice and flush so at this first stage when you're playing with these wires don't worry if you tighten these down and you see the tail uh, is is kind of opened and because that's kind of what I thought so the first two screws go into the front and a screw goes right underneath the cockpit there, so you'll see me go in there. Sorry, I had to get my head in the shot to see where I was doing. So I get that started with a little magnetic, magnetic chuck and then tighten it up with the screwdriver. And this is where it's going to kind of sandwich that horizontal stab, so you kind of need to hold it in the right place so it's in its notches. And then we're good to go. We'll flip it over. And there is the last screw goes in right underneath the tail. You see me putting that right in there. And that finally flushes everything up. It's nice and tight. And the two main pieces of the fus fuselage are together. And just by tightening that last screw, the horizontal stab is now nice and tight and it's not going anywhere. So all the seams really uh, fit together really nicely as long as the screws were tightened. So um, right now I'm really happy and taking a moment to just kind of look how nice this thing is. I was, I was kind of worried, uh, but I'm really excited. So let's open up this bag with the canopy. Then we have the wheels, and then we have the little tail wheel piece, and then this little round piece that is to cover that last screw that I'm pointing at right here. Now, I think they would want you to glue. It doesn't snap in. It just fits perfectly and will fall out. So I think they would want, If I think if you were serious, you would glue that in there, but then... Um, I mean, yeah, you I mean you're never gonna want to take this apart. So I'm gonna leave it off I don't care if it's there, but I'm gonna keep it in a in a little drawer somewhere that will get lost in 10 years from now I'll wonder what the hell this little round piece is, but uh, let's get these wheel pants out. They're nice and heavy and I think some people would glue these on um, but if you look at the pegs on the wheel pants they are notched so you can't just set them there. And, and I'm kind of playing around right here to see like, well, they just kind of fit in there uh, with a little bit of force. They will snap in slightly. Uh, so they're not snapped in right now because you'll see I'll kind of turn it over and uh, they'll kind of fall out. So this is where you see I'm realizing, OK, just a little bit of force and they, and they snap in there just right enough. So I would snap those in there and wait until you put the flying wires on to decide if you want to just drop a dab of CA glue in there, just kind of hold them in place. So the wheel pants are on and the canopy is really simple, just to snap into place there. Obviously you want to put the canopy on after you tighten that screw in the middle of the fuselage. So here is the cowling and it's shaped so it can only go on one way and it matches up with the pin striping. Uh, but mainly there's those two little notches for the wings. So this does need to go back. It's a little tough to get on and I'm kind of, you see, I kind of, I thought maybe that's as far as it needs to go, but it does need to go back all the way because that's going to help hold the propeller and the motor correctly. So right now it's, the cowl is not slid back all the way and you're, and you're seeing me kind of holding the motor and prop with my finger and thumb as I'm putting the cowl ring on the front. And again, um, you could glue this. I decided not to. And you see there's a little bit of play there. And that is because that cowl is not all the way back. And you see it just kind of clicked all the way back. And now it's holding the, mo the motor and propeller really nice. And uh, interesting thing, any uh, real aviation guys or RC people will see that this propeller is not balanced whatsoever. It's actually terrible, but that's just kind of an inside joke. All right, so the flying wires go in pretty easy. They're little uh, metal wires and they're, the holes are there for them already. You have to, what I did was kind of set them all together 
uh, based on their size and the instruction booklet tells you which wires go where. And right here, I'm just kind of showing you how these top wing wires go in. I'm not gonna go through putting all of these in there, but uh, this is basically the last step here. Um, before I mentioned CA, I, I had some goop around and I thought maybe uh, since goop is so thick, um, I tried goop with a toothpick to glue the wheels on because there is nothing that clips those in. That is just, uh, they just kind of sit there. So you were, you were going to have to glue those wheels into the wheel pan. So I just took a toothpick and got just a little bit of goop and kind of lined the edges and we'll set the wheels in there. I'm using so little goop and goop is so strong and effective that that's all it needs. And we'll let it sit for a while for that to set up. And again, these go on really easy. They don't clip. They just kind of sit right on their little ridge. Very nice. All right, we're getting to the last part here. I put some goop down underneath the tail wheel. Uh, the tail wheel kind of clamps this bottom horizontal stab flying wire. So uh, I put some glue where the tail wheel goes and then I put the flying wire in its holes and the tail wheel goes over the flying wire. Put some goop in there and it will sit up just fine. So go through, take your time with all the flying wires, uh, and then this is where I decided to use some CA, some gap filling CA. And what I did was I found that I could get these flying wires in, but they would a lot of times fall out. So I just got a little cup and put a few drops of CA, and I would just roll the end of these flying wires just a little bit in this CA, just a tad, and then that way I can set them in their holes and let it sit, and you're good to go. So check out the rest of the photos. I am very happy with this diecast model. I love the red line. This is a perfect setup video for building the 50cc Black Horse Gilmore red line. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this video. Love this diecast model and we will see you next time.